and just play the damn thing. So let's talk about this new Epiphone headstock, shall we? Some of you might be wondering just exactly what I'm referring to if you are not aware. Epiphone recently released uh, a uh, an Epiphone version of the uh, the Kirk Hammett signature uh, Greeny Les Paul, I believe it is. Uh, and Kirk Hammett has actually been playing said guitar uh, live out on tour, on stage, currently as we speak. Now, first off, hats off to Kirk Hammett, the lead guitar player for the most popular metal band in the history of this planet. For proving to the entire guitar world that you do not have to have a $5,000 guitar in order for it to be a serviceable instrument on stage, even at his level. I admit I'm probably a little bit biased because if you follow my channel at all, you're probably aware that I am, in fact, a diehard Metallica fan. I'm not making any apologies for that, but you know, Kirk Hammett being at this top tier level of mega star, uh, you know, mega star rock star status. You know, for him to be playing an Epiphone on stage out on tour, and their their tours are big, big money productions, by the way. Uh, yeah, that's a statement. It's also not lost on me that this is probably an agreement that he had with Gibson regarding their recent collaboration, uh, and you know, their uh, recent endorsement of him and their instruments as of late. Hence, the Gibson Greeny Les Paul that has recently come out in all of his different iterations, and also the Kirk Hammett signature flying bees and stuff that are out. Yeah, yeah, again, he's probably fulfilling a contract obligation of some kind. No problems with that either. No big deal. However, there seem to be a lot of mixed emotions about uh, the, you know, the new headstock that Epiphone is using on these Les Pauls. Uh, and the reason why is because it looks like this. In other words, it's the... In other words, it is the classic Gibson-shaped headstock. Now, some people seem to be reacting like this is a sacrilege because one of the things that always made this brand prestigious was the fact that it was only this brand that carried the full open book headstock, the full mustache headstock, whatever you want to call it, uh, as opposed to you know the, the traditional Epiphone headstock that kind of had the corners of this headstock nipped off. And that headstock looks like this. Again, virtually the same shape, it just, it's just missing the corners. Here and here. And that was how you were always able to differentiate, you know, the, the, by the, just the shape of the headstock if you weren't able to read the logo itself. So to my knowledge, this is the first time in Gibson's entire history that they have allowed the standard Gibson 3 and 3 headstock to appear on an Epiphone product. To my knowledge, they have never done that before. At least not with the 3 and 3 headstock. Yes, it has been done in the past with other headstocks, such as the Flying V. Both Gibson and Epiphone Flying Vs tend to come with this headstock on it. Just a matter of, you know, which logo they put on it. It's really the only differentiating factor. And they've also done it with this headstock. You know, again, same same shape, you know, the... The, a lot of people call this the hockey stick headstock, the banana headstock, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the headstock that you typically see on most explorers, which is what, the, what I'm holding here. Uh, Gibson or Epiphone. And again, you know, the logo there on the headstock is really the only way to differentiate exactly which brand it is from the front anyway. And I think they've done it with a few others like the Firebird and stuff like that. But the three, but the three and three headstock, the ones on the Les Pauls, the SGs, the ES models, you know, and the Epiphone line has always been the traditional Epiphone headstock. Now, Circa 2018, 2019, I think it was 2019. Uh, you know, after the the current ownership took over from the previous ownership at Gibson, you know, they started making some changes. And the Epiphone line since then, Epiphone products have been pretty good. Uh, you know, as far as quality goes, they've been pretty consistent. Typically, you know, for the most part, you buy an Epiphone sight unseen and you know online and store whatever. For the most part, you buy an Epiphone, you got a pretty good idea what you're going to get. Setups vary out of the box, but that's gonna, you're going to have that with literally any guitar brand on the planet. So even Gibson and Epiphone are not alone in that problem. You know, but after new ownership took over, they they uh, they put a new focus on the Epiphone line. Uh, you know, as far as you know, making sure people were getting value for the dollar and everything. And they did kind of change up the traditional headstock a little bit then to this, 
which was kind of cool. You know, it kind of resembled the Gibson headstock, but it's not. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't quite the same, you know, and it still had some, uh, you know, still it kind of had its own differentiation from from the Gibson headstock. It, it looked like the old, uh, the old uh, uh, like, uh, Japanese uh, Made in Japan Elitist series headstocks, I think is what it was. You know, and also from the MI business side of it, you know, as somebody that sells these, you know, uh, specializes in selling these guitars for a living, it helped me to differentiate exactly which era this, you know, the, that particular Epiphone came from, uh, and it still to this day currently helps me to guide customers and say, you know, this is a good guitar, generally speaking, as opposed to the previous era when quality was a lot more hit or miss, as we all know. But again, this is the first time that the actual Gibson. 3-in-3 three three headstock shape has appeared on an Epiphone product in history. And, again, hats off to Kirk Hammond for getting the word out there to everybody. Now, you're going to have two different sides of opinion on this. You're going to have the purists, you know, and these are, and by the way, these are typically people that have the money to spend on actual Gibson, you know, that have more money to spend on guitars and buy, you know, prefer to buy Gibsons over Epiphones. Uh, and, by the way, I admit I prefer the higher-end Gibson line even with as much as they continue to piss me off these days. You know, but I still tend to prefer the higher end Gibson line. You know, so you have that crowd, but you also have the crowd that I was once a part of, and I'm not turning my nose up at at all, uh, you know, that may not be able to afford a Gibson, you know, and they're, you know, realize that the Epiphone is, is, is a, you know, is a pretty close second and much more in line with the price range. And to be clear, that is exactly how I wound up with this Epiphone Les Paul Black Beauty uh, in about 2007 or so, I think it was. And it was my main guitar for, for many years, and I thought it was the greatest guitar on the planet next to the Gibson that it was, a, that it was, a, that it was designed after, that I knew I was never going to be able to afford and still haven't been able to afford since. So that customer is going to be thrilled with this because now their Epiphones, they're more, much more affordable. Epiphones that they know and love, and, and honestly, you're probably going to have a lot more consistent quality uh, as far as QA is concerned, uh, are now going to more closely resemble the more expensive Gibson counterparts. Most of the major differences are still going to be there. You know, the Epiphones are still probably going to have import electronics in most cases, you know, that I'm really not that big of a fan of. You know, the Pro Buckers are a lot better than the old, old Alnico 2 Classics, but... The clarity on those pickups has improved quite a bit over the old Alnico classics that they used to throw in everything, but you know the their import burst buckers and they still have absolutely no balls to them whatsoever. So they're still going to come with the same import electronics. I'm sure they're still going to have the the, uh, the 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 same polyurethane finish and uh, you know and the same run of the mill wood selection that you're going to see, you know, in most Epiphone guitars. Yeah, none of that's going to change. You know? And again, those are things that set the Gibson brand apart from its import Epiphone counterpart. But I think there's going to be a lot more happy Epiphone customers now because they're, you know, that that little that simple little change to the headstock is going to look a lot closer to what they had probably always wanted, and that's a good thing for those customers. Now, the the more elite customers, on the other hand, those people are going to be pissed off because now the you know the more it, you know what in their minds are going to be the inferior inferior Epiphones are now suddenly going to be a lot closer to the guitar that they paid thousands of dollars for, and uh, you know now all of a sudden owning a guitar with this headstock on it. This is my Zach Wild uh, Vertigo Les Paul, by the way, but owning a legitimate. Authentic Gibson with this head, this shape of a headstock on it is suddenly not quite as prestigious as it once was. And I also understand that too, by the way. You know, but at the end of the day, they are still two different brands. You know, and really the only thing that's changing is the headstock, uh, the headstock shape overall. I think it's a good thing. You know, and realistically, the only people that are really going to give a shit are guitar players. You go to a, any live show of any band. The vast majority of just about any live band audience are not musicians. And non-musicians do not give a shit what kind of guitar that the guitar player is using. They certainly don't give a shit if it's a Gibson versus an Epiphone. They, they certainly don't give a shit if their Fender Strat was made in Mexico or made in the USA. They don't. Audiences do not care. They're there to see the act. They're not there to see the gear. The only people that care about the gear are the very, very, very few people in the audience, like us, 
who are you know who actually consciously pay attention to that because we're musicians we love gear you know even a lot of musicians don't really care about you know aren't, aren't gearheads like i am so if you're one of the people that's all butthurt over gibson finally allowing uh, a few, just a few models out of the epiphone brand to have access to the gibson shaped headstock stop it stop crying stop whining you're making yourself look stupid you know if you're one of the people that's ecstatic about this for the reasons that I already stated. By all means, man, go spend your money. Go go get you one of them, you know, one of them Epiphone Kirk Hammond Les Pauls, dude. Absolutely. That's why they that's why they did this. You know, Epiphone's entire existence. Gibson and Epiphone's entire existence. They are here for us. Their 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 entire purpose is to sell guitars. And they are to sell them, sell guitars to people like you who are interested in them and want to buy them. That you are exactly who they did this for. And you should absolutely Take advantage of it.